welcome to my living room. We'll be doing 75 minute yin practice this evening. So get yourself set up with any props or supports that you have that you like to use, maybe a big cushion, a couple of blocks, maybe a blanket. I'm gonna set up my doggies so they're peaceful and we'll get started in just a minute. music for you from DJ Taz Rashid and Soul Rising. I'd like to start this evening with a poem. So find a nice tall seat and sit up onto a block or your bolster or a cushion. Start to focus on your breath. Find where it is in your body. Maybe your palms are facing down on your thighs or palms facing up for more open energy. Maybe even have them at your heart. Start to pay attention more to the breath. Maybe your eyes are closed or you're softly gazing down. This is called the land of not knowing. This is the land of not knowing, where many things are new. We're not exactly sure of what to say or what to do. Our world seemed normal yesterday. Today it all feels strange. We cannot know exactly how our lives will change. There is much we can't control. We never really could, but we can choose to help. We can use our gifts for good. When one girl saw that hugs had stopped, she drew small hugs to offer cheer. A symphony played songs for free, so folks heard beauty through their fear. Each of us has power we can use in little ways. We each can choose a gift to share, sharing light the darkest days. Not knowing can feel scary. We have not been here before, but the moon is still so splendid. Come look with me, I'll hold the door. The beautiful poem that I just came across by Amy Ludwig van der Water. I hope you enjoyed those words and that idea that so many things are changing that we're not familiar with and yet so many things stay the same. Changing of the seasons, the cycles of the moon, the tides, the weather, things that we're familiar with like beautiful cherry blossoms everywhere despite all of this chaos around us. So we have to find ways to find the beauty in the things that seem familiar and comforting. And I hope that this practice will leave you feeling that way, that sense of comfort and familiarity. We'll be focusing a lot tonight on decompression, letting things release as best that you can. Take a couple long, deep breaths wherever you are. Sigh out your mouth for the next two. Your inhale through your nose. Release, exhale. Again, inhale. And then six to eight more deep breaths, any way you like. Especially this evening, we'll be focusing around the lower back, decompressing the spine, releasing from the adrenal glands, which release cortisol and adrenaline during times of stress. So we want to keep that in check and in balance as much as possible to reduce your immediate response to stress with more stress and rather the ability to face stress with a sense of calm and balance and maybe even relaxation. As you're ending your last few breaths, come up with an intention for your practice tonight, a word or a phrase that you can tether yourself to to guide you, something that you're working on both on and off your mat.
and importantly, dedicate this practice to yourself, to someone else. Lately, I've been focusing on all of the first responders and community workers, all the heroes in our community that are keeping us clothed and fed and safe and healthy everywhere. So many heroes in our communities right now. So whoever it is that you'd like to dedicate it to, it could be somebody you know that's been directly affected or indirectly affected by this virus, this pandemic. It could be somebody that you just are wishing you could see right now. So bring them into your heart space, into your mind's eye, and let them be with you here in the practice. Together we'll take a collective chant of OM and as you OM, focus on the mm of the OM, that mm quality of the Brahmari breath which helps to signal your parasympathetic nervous system to relax. Deep clearing, inhale through your nose. Big sigh out your mouth, exhale. Inhale for OM. Oh. Allow the echo of the OM, especially the mm of the OM, to remain on your lips, in your mind, in your body. Feel the ripple out from your heart center in all directions as if this OM could blanket the entire earth, heal the earth through this vibration. We begin our practice tonight in a seated butterfly pose so you can come off of your bolster or blocks if you like. You can also remain sitting on them if that works for you. Take a moment to lean back into your leg, at your hands, stretch out your legs, roll them side to side, or maybe tilt your chin toward each shoulder or ear to shoulder. And either sitting on cushions or not, you can bring the soles of your feet together, knees out wide, and feel free to use some kind of props or blocks if you have them. Don't worry if you don't. Underneath your knees, outer thigh. If you have a big cushion like I do, or maybe you have something probably a little smaller, you can lean forward onto it. You get a little bend in the middle so it acts like a spring. You can come further down if you like. Let your arms relax. If you'd like to go further, you can lay over top of the cushion or a bolster as well. And here, not going so much for depth, but for a rounding of the back. We want to stretch out the lower, mid, and upper back, particularly the adrenal glands, to create right away some balance into that area that responds to stress. And I'll let you be here in quiet sort of posture. Try to allow yourself to go deeper into the silence, into the depth. Enjoy the music.
take your last five deep breaths here. Sigh out your mouth. Let something go. hold for time if you feel like you can go deeper you can remove props or if you feel like you need more props can you use a pillow on its side keep 
Now focusing on your breath. Allow the exhalation breath to soften each any degree. A little bit more each time. And feel the extension rocking underneath your heels all the way up the back of your legs, over your hips, over your torso, right to the top of your head, right to the line above your eyebrows. This represents a past. Release yourself from any experiences, any feelings, any sensations from the past. Stay here in the present. Particularly stretching through the kidneys, the adrenal glands, bringing them back into balance. Reducing that tension from the cortisol and adrenaline that keeps fighting stress. Let us ease into stress and face stress with balance. And make this posture as easeful as you can. If you have your head turned one way, you can turn it the other. good sides of your mouth and see if you can melt even deeper for the last couple of minutes in the pose. So take three or four deep cleansing breaths first. And then a few breaths after that to roll yourself up. Take your time. There's absolutely no rush. stay on the mat. Fingertips come underneath your shoulders, pointing forward towards your hips. Roll the shoulders back, chest is lifting. You're welcome to stay right here. Feet are slightly forward of your knees. Press the feet down, lift your heart. Maybe you stay here. Chin can come to the chest if that feels better for you. Neutral or even let it go back. If it feels good, you can start to lift your hips. Moving from the hammock into the table. Maybe let the head drop all the way back, resting between your shoulders. Taking your time to lower the seat back down. Three more breaths here in Hannah. 
that chest is lifted, shoulders back, maybe gaze back, deep breath in. As you sigh, chin to chest, round the spine, wrap your arms around your chin bone. Inhale. Exhale. Take your time to easily make your way onto your belly. All the way forward onto the belly. And we will set up for Sphinx Pose. So for Sphinx Pose, if you feel like you need a little bit more elevation of the chest, you can use a pillow or blanket. Underneath the solar plexus, palms are, are face down, forearms like a number 11. And as you press your forearms and palms in, hug your elbows towards your hips and see if you can extend up towards the chest. You're welcome to stay here. If this feels a lot for your head or your chest you can, or your back, you can always lower down and make the pose to your swing. If you would like to stay up but you don't want to hold your head up, use a block or two under the forehead and keep pulling the chest forward but chin toward the chest. We'll hold here for a short time and then the option to switch into seal pose. So take about 10 to 12 deep breaths here. We did a lot of rounding out the back. Now we need a little bit of extension. We did flexion, and now we go for extension. So right where we were rounding around the kidneys, now there's a bit of compression in the lower spine. If it feels too much for you, you can always extend fully onto the belly, forehead down. There's still a slight extension if you have a pillow underneath your belly. right in the corner of your mat and push your chest up straight. We'll have just a minute here in this variation. You're welcome to stay just like this, lifting the heart through the arms. If you'd like, you can take your knees wide, bend your knees, toes toward the back of your head and lift your chest. You might want to walk your hands even closer to your hips to get more of a expression through the front line of the body, shoulders back and down. And I know this is the time that people are going out onto their balconies and into their neighborhoods and expressing gratitude for all of the people in our communities that are the heroes right now. So let the energy pour out of your heart and join that energy out there. Two more breaths here. Pour the energy from your heart center wherever you are. Send it out to the heroes in our communities. Big breath in. Exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. You can release out of the posture. Remove any props that you might have. Release right onto your belly. Forehead down. Make a pillow. Stay right here or bend your knees and the windshield wipe her side to side a few times. 
Seite zu Seite, Seite zu Seite. Into a half frog pose, so as you're ready, release your legs down to the mat. You can start with your arms in a cactus shape up to the side or a little pillow with your hands, and then take your left knee. I'll just demonstrate it with my right so you can see it better. Your left knee will come out to the left knee in line with your hip. Keep your foot flexed so it's at 90 degree angle with your shin. Forehead can be straight down. You can also turn your head to the left. Sorry, to yes, to the left. Or for more of a twist, turn your head to the right. Arda Mandukasana, half frog pose. You can have that cactus arm as well. Use any props you like underneath your knee or your chest. I've been saying that every time I hear this song, which is a new song from Soul Rising, who again has really graciously donated his music for people sharing free yoga right now, I really need ya. It really resonates with me right now because being um, away from my yoga community and all of my students, my friends, they become my family, all of you who are watching now or might be watching later, I really need you in my life and being able to share this with you even in this remote way helps keep me connected to you. So thank you for showing up on your mats anytime that you do and all of your positive messages and encouragement. I really need you. So thank you. And stay here a few more minutes. Relax. to be the loudest one in the room. <laughs> and just in the same way that a yawn is that it's something that we, we see other people do and suddenly we want to do it our, ourselves is like a contagious thing. A deep breath is also a contagious thing. When you hear somebody sigh, it makes you want to have that same relief. So last two breaths here. Inhale. Ah. Inhale. 
and side. We'll release by sliding the left leg to meet the right. And release right onto your belly, forehead down. If you want to push your hands underneath your shoulders, take your knees wide, toes touching, and push yourself back to Balasana. You can, child pose. Maybe you take Anahatasana with the arms, palms touching, bend your elbows, thumbs to your neck. Toes touching, palms extended. Take a breath in and a breath out. And we'll walk forward and back a few times to massage out the pelvis. So let the toes come up and over your hips, belly right down. Push into your hands again all the way back until the toes touch. Hips to heels, balasana. Do a few more if you like, or you can hold in stillness. It's a really nice way to massage out the hip flexors, gain some mobility into the hips and the pelvis. Last time through, back to child pose and then onto the belly with the breath. Inhale, all the way down to the belly. Lengthen your legs out long behind you. Cactus your arms and this time, right leg comes out to the right. Foot is flexed, 90 degree angle with your foot and your shin, 90 degree angle with your thigh and your calf. Forehead can be straight down, you can make a pillow. You could turn your gaze to the right, more easeful, or to the left, more challenging. And not challenging in a way that this should be hard for you, but it requires more rotation and openness in the neck. So if you don't have that available today, don't push it here, just stay as you are. Adha Mandir Kasana, half frog. Again, focusing on walking the energy down, grounding down and rooting down here, feeling that connection into the earth, into the elements of our tailbone, our root chakra, into our pelvic region, Vaidhisana. And I encourage you to be the loudest one in the room with your exhalations. That signal to your central nervous system is so important in this, in this practice to stay in a state of resting, digesting, and relaxing rather than fighting and flighting and freezing, which right now most of us are in a lot of the time. You know, you just open up any internet page or channel on the TV or anything on your social media and it's a barrage of difficult news most of the time it's hard to find something that's positive and useful and right away you get a constriction in the body somewhere so let this be your decompression this is your way of washing it all out smoothing it all out letting it go even if just for 75 minutes it might be the most that you've had today maybe in a whole week If your head has been turned to one side, you can take it to the other side.
last six to eight deep breaths here. Again, focus on the mmm of the ohm, that long sigh of the mouth. Forehead straight down on your palm. Take a few deep breaths here. All of these poses in between the yin poses to decompress themselves, to neutralize, bring your body back into a state of equilibrium. push back into a child pose so palms under your shoulders you could take your knees wide lift your feet up touching as you push yourself back shift onto the toes let them drop down hips to heels extend forward take a breath in and if it feels good for you bring your arms beside your body forehead down and here we'll take three brahmari breaths so again focusing on that mm sound of the om, that humming sound with the lips closed every time you exhale. And again, I encourage you to be the loudest one in the room. You might be the only one, but maybe wake up your neighbors or somebody else that might be in your house or your neighborhood with this and send this vibration out, this healing vibration meant to decompress and soften the body bring you to a state of equanimity and peace. Deep clearing breath in through your nose. Ramari breath. Mm. Let your whole body vibrate in that state that you're in in child pose. Again, inhale. Mm. natural state. And then slowly, from child pose, extend your arms back out in front of you. Maybe a few breaths each side. Arms go to the right, stretch your hips to the left. your hands back to center, hands to the left, hips to the right. Back to center, take one more full round of breath, maybe tent your fingertips, let your arm bones lift up, forehead down. Slowly walking your hands back towards your knees and lifting yourself up. And this next pose might require you to use some props underneath your seat for saddle pose. So set up your blocks if you like. Come forward. You're welcome to shake out your legs if you need. Sit up onto your blocks and let your shin bones and tops of your feet press down into the mat. And you can stay right here if you're up high on the blocks. Maybe hold on to the back of the blocks or your hips or your waist in any way that feels comfortable and, and let your chest open and find a little bit of a back bend here. 
It's not as long a hold as some of our other postures, so if it's starting to get uncomfortable, you can always release one leg bent with your foot on the mat and just stretch the other leg. If you are lower down, if you're not on the blocks, try to bring your hips down between your heels. Lift your hips up and slide your tailbone forward towards your knees and make you stay here with your fingertips pointing towards your toes and maybe you lower all the way down onto your elbows or your forearms. Maybe you come all the way down onto your back but keep the knees pressing down. Maybe you wrap your opposite elbow with your palm or you take cactus arms. Try to press the knees forward and down. Keep tapping the tailbone toward the front of your mat. Deep breath in. Wherever you are, deep breath out. Inhale. Yet, if it's too much for you to be down there, using your fingertips like a little kickstand, opening your torso and your chest, same idea, finding that back bend in a vertical position. This is really good for the ankle bones, for the shins, for the thighs. It's a deep stretch for those big muscle groups in the legs. Finding that little back bend or deeper back bend if you're all the way down. Heart is open. So take your last five deep breaths here. Try to hold on to it, hold for time. Feel maybe a little discomfort, but sit in the discomfort as long as it's not painful. It takes time for some of these tight areas to soften. They, they're very resistant at the beginning. Last few breaths. Last two. time push yourself up if you're all the way down walk your hands forward as you come up very tender from this posture so take your time extend one leg gently back behind you walk forward and back a few times other side time to make your way all the way down onto your back. I had a little conversation earlier with somebody who might be watching right now and they said I hope we don't have to do anything where we have to be I think the word was straight. <laughs> so this is a chance to get a little crooked. We're going to take banana asana. It's actually a real name of a real pose but we'll curve our side body like a banana. So one side of our body will be compressed and the other side will be very lengthened. So start by lying down onto your back. Get yourself down there any way that feels good. Take a stretch. Extend your arms up over your head. Point your toes. Big, big breath in. Get as long as you can. Soften as you exhale. And we'll start by going to the right side. So take your right foot off to the right as far as you can and let the left leg follow. It might not go very far. If you can, step your left foot over top of your right ankle. And you might need to pull it back a little bit. Now your arms are still extended straight past the top of your mat. Start to walk your right arm out to the right. Keep your head and shoulders down left arm all the way to the right 
And you can stay with your arms away from each other, or maybe wrap your right hand around your left wrist. And for me, I like to turn my gaze open to the left here. And another important thing is to try to get the outer left hip down. So if you're really rolling over to your right, try to get both sitting bones down and you'll start to feel this deeply into the outer left hip, maybe down the IT band. And if you rock your right toes more to the right and really pull that left foot toward the right, you'll feel it even more. And the more you can pull on your left wrist, you'll feel it. So lots of compression here on the right side, but opening decompression on the left side. Make yourself the best banana that you can be. <laughs> nice crooked banana. Try to breathe deeply into your left side rib cage. Feel the opening up like an accordion. And then that compression on the right side, so just like the, the bellows of a fan or the opening and closing of the accordion. You want to open up that left side of your rib cage. Create space there for any internal organs. They're compressed on the right side and then we'll switch it up so you can get that nice massage back and forth, that squeezing in and squeezing out. Compression, decompression. You might have noticed a lot of the stress that we have lately. There's a tightness in the ribs. There's this knitting in that causes our heart to sink in, our shoulders to hinge forward. And a lot of it too is we're spending a lot more time on our screens and a lot of time sitting. So everything's getting rounder and rounder and rounder. So this is the chance to laterally expand and get back into the side body looking up to the left if you can to offer our free yoga all next week. I'm going to change the times a little bit, a little bit earlier. And on Friday night will be a yin class. I think it's going to be at 7.15. So I want to make the classes uh, earlier or later than the 7 o'clock time because it's really nice to get out there in your community and share the, the love for all of the heroes right now that we have out there. So anyways, extra yin class on Friday night. Take your last few deep breaths in this beautiful banana shape that you've created for yourself. Maybe roll your outer left hip down just a little bit more. Can you pull that left wrist just a little bit more? Maybe rock your toes, right toes more to the right to hook those left toes with you. Last inhale, full exhale. Now slowly release your left foot off of your right, release your left hand from your right. Bring yourself to an anatomically neutral position like Shavasana and lying on your back. You're welcome to stay here exactly as you are. If it might feel good for you to bend your knees and maybe bring your knees into your chest, Hug them, maybe rock side to side. Something I love to do when I have a bolster is bring, <laughs> this is a big bolster, <laughs> is bring the bolster over my shin bones and wrap it all the way around. Give myself a little extra compression. Now I've never tried it with this gigantic cushion. If you have a bolster, you're lucky. <laughs> Put your feet underneath the bolster, nice and wide. Looks like it's gonna work. Extend your legs up to the ceiling. So you could stay just, again, lie on your back, 
knees to chest, apanasana, or here we can reach a karate reverse waterfall. Take 10 deep breaths. For some reason, this isn't accessible to you. You can always keep your shins parallel to the floor, balance the bolster or pillow. I've had this cushion for so long, and you just realize now how handy it is. <laughs> the things you find out when you're stuck at home for me. Try to feel your sacrum melting down into the mat. Last few breaths. ready to release that cushion again you can squeeze your shins if that's a pillow if you have it or just your arms around your shins become pretty inventive with the things in your house to use for your yoga practice and again we'll move ourselves into the other side of banana asana Lying down onto your back. And this time you'll step your left foot as far out to the left as you can. Right leg comes to meet it and maybe you can cross your right ankle over your left but try to keep both hips down. Arms are extended over the body, big stretch. Left arm comes to the left, right arm comes toward it and maybe you can wrap your left wrist uh, fingers around your right wrist. Again, both hips and shoulders down. Maybe you turn and look up toward the right side. Find a comfortable position for your gaze and your neck. And if it feels good, try tilting your left toes more to the left and pull your right leg with you. And this will give you that nice stretch. It's hard to get down the IT band. So keep the hips and shoulders down and pull those right toes toward the left. Again, breathing in, decompressing the right side of the body and compressing more on the left. So you get that, that opening and then releasing both sides of the rib cage. So deep internal massage. And really important here, we hold so much tension. Again, as I said, in our torso, this rounding forward as we have a lot of heaviness coming in through our different senses, particularly through our eyes and our ears these days in the words that we speak. See if you can open it up, left and right side. Let the space around your heart stretch. Let the space around your belly stretch. All of those intercostal muscles between your ribs, you can take a wider, deeper breath when needed, rather than that constricted, tense, stressful breath. Can you breathe deeply, opening up fully through the lungs? expanding through the side body so right now your chance to give it a little gymnastic workout here through the rib cage get more agility through the ribs more expansiveness more buoyancy and openness deep inhales and exhales My plan is to, um, for this posture, to finish off with a twist and then lead you through yoga nidra and then you stay as long as you like. The class will end, there will be no transition to shavasana, it will just be that. Whatever happens after yoga nidra, you, you, that will be your shavasana and you stay. If you fall asleep, <laughs> amazing, I'm so happy for you. If you need to crawl up to, the, to your bed, you can do that too. Maybe you're already in your bed. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Be in yoga in your bed. So last uh, five breaths here, and then we'll have a little transition into a twist, and then yoga nidra. particular song by 
DJ Taz Rashid, one of the other musicians from this playlist, who has generously been donating his music for free yoga classes. It, uh, this song is called Ananda, which means bliss. So I hope that in these moments of this class, it's a beautiful evening, maybe you can see the gorgeous sky out there and the moon starting to rise somewhere out there. I sort of take a little peek at it, that you're feeling that even in the way the world is right now, you can still find moments of bliss, Ananda. It's up to you, really, it's up to you. Last deep inhale. Full exhale, sigh out your mouth. And then bring your banana back to a neutral position, right leg back to center, left leg. Find an anatomically neutral pose for yourself. If you'd like to take Apanasana again, knees to chest or Vigarita Karani, the legs up and arms up, you can. Or just take a few breaths here. Set ourselves up for our final posture before Yoga Nidra and Tabasana. Bring your knees in toward your chest. Now you're welcome to keep the knees together like this. If you would like to cross your right thigh over your left or even hook your toes, you can. Cactus your arms. Take your hips a little bit to the right side and drop both your knees, either in this position or stacked together over to the left side. Left palm on your outer right thigh and turn, maybe and you take your gaze toward the right. Not too long here in this twist because I want you to have lots of time for yoga nidra. To stay in it as long as you can. It's such a beautiful state to be in. I want to thank you too before we get too deep into yoga nidra for choosing to spend your time with me whether you're watching now or you're watching later um, you know there are so many people sharing yoga right now sometimes it's for donations sometimes it costs money for, for me i just feel comfortable to keep it free i know a lot of us are in similar position and it brings me incredible bliss ananda great joy to share yoga the way i've always been sharing it and Hopefully one day all of this positive energy that we're creating will allow us to, to come back together again in person. And until that time, I don't want to lose my chance to keep sharing and practicing with all of you. So thank you so much. Namaste so much from, the, from my heart to yours. Thank you for, for choosing this time with me. Take five more breaths on this side of the twist. Maybe even bring your knees up a little higher. Take your gaze to the right if you haven't already. And starting tomorrow, my weeknight classes will be at 5.30 till 6.45. And there'll be power, uh, alternating power and hatha. And then Friday night will be yin. And then the 90 minutes Saturday morning are my favorite power. And again, Sunday night yin. I think I'll keep it at 6.30. I kind of like this. Time on Sunday night. Two more deep breaths. After your last and final breath, bring your gaze back through center. Bring your hands beside you for a little support as you tone your abdominals to bring your knees into your chest. And you can rock it out if it feels good, or just let the feet drop to the mat. Now we'll cross our left thigh over our right, maybe hook the toes if that feels good, or knees together. Practice your arms. Jog your hips a little bit to the left side, and knees will come all the way down to the right. Then place your right hand on your left thigh, look over your shoulder. couple of minutes here to unwind the spine. I always find it kind of interesting that we have to wind ourselves up in order to unwind. So take it easy. It takes time to unwind.
last six or so breaths here. Last few breaths, inhale through your nose, sigh out your mouth as you exhale. And you'll slowly start to bring yourself back into a neutral position. So bring your gaze back first. Bring your arms beside you, squeeze your abdominals a little bit to bring your knees back into center. Hug your knees into your chest a few times, rocking side to side. And then slowly soften onto your back and prepare yourself in any way that you like for your yoga nidra and shavasana so it might mean that you bring a pillow under your thighs <laughs> my gigantic pillow maybe you bring a pillow under your head really nice and then find yourself a nice cozy blanket to curl up with cover yourself so you feel warm and protected and soft give you just minute or so to get in that position. And as I'm guiding you through yoga nidra, use your awareness through every part of your body, trying to relax progressively each place, one by one. You don't think about it too hard. It's okay if you get off track and you have to come back. Let's try to stay in this deep zone of relaxation if you can. It's something I've always struggled with because I usually fall asleep after the first like 30 seconds. So if that happens to you, it's okay. It happens to me too. But if you can, stay with it. Try to stay with it. And then at the end, just keep going. And I'll, I'll say goodbye to you a little bit at the end and you just carry on as you are. So to begin with, let's bring your awareness to your mind's eye. Focus in on your mind's eye and come back to your intention that you set at the beginning of the practice. Come back to your dedication that you set at the beginning of the practice and draw those like a seed right down into your heart and let them take root and spread all throughout your body, all through your torso, through your limbs, right to the crown of your head. Take a big breath in, soften everything as you exhale. And again, bring your awareness to your mind's eye and drop your awareness all the way down the left side of your body to your left thumb. Relax your left thumb. Relax your second finger. Relax your third finger. Relax your fourth finger. Relax your fifth finger. Relax the palm of your hand. Relax the top of your hand. Relax your wrist. Feel your whole left hand relax. Bring your awareness to your left lower arm, to the forearm. Relax. Relax your elbow. Relax your upper arm. Relax your shoulder. As if your whole left arm were made of sand, let it be heavy, sinking down into your mat. Take a deep breath in. And a full breath out. 
And now bring your awareness from your third eye, from the mind's eye, drop it down like a seed all the way to the right thumb. Relax your right thumb. Relax your second finger. Relax your third finger. Relax your fourth finger. Relax your fifth finger. Relax all of your fingers. Relax your palm. Relax the top of your hand. Relax your wrist. Relax your right lower arm, your forearm. Relax your elbow. Relax your upper arm. Relax your shoulder. Relax your whole arm from your fingertips to your shoulder. As if your whole arm was made of sand, let it sink heavy down into the mat. Both of your arms heavy. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. One more. Inhale. Exhale. And again, bring your awareness to your mind's eye. And like you're dropping a seed, drop it all the way down your body, all the way to the left big toe. And let it plant deeply there, the seed of relaxation. Relax your left big toe. Relax your second toe. Relax your third toe. Relax your fourth toe. And relax your fifth toe. Relax all of your toes. Relax the top of your foot. Relax the bottom of your foot. Relax your heel. Relax your ankle. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Your whole left foot relaxes. Relax your left lower leg. Relax your left knee. Relax your upper left leg and relax your left hip. Just like your arms, can you feel your whole leg like it's made of sand, weighing you down to the mat? There's a depth and heaviness there. Come back to your mind's eye again with the seed of relaxation and drop it all the way down, all the way down your body to your right big toe. Relax your right big toe. Relax your second toe. Relax your third toe. Relax your fourth toe. Relax your fifth toe. Relax all of your toes. Relax the top of your foot, the bottom of your foot, your heel and your ankle. Relax your lower leg. Relax your knee. Relax your upper leg. Relax your hip. Relax your entire right leg. Heavy like sand. Let it sink down into the mat. Take a deep breath in and sense your whole body heavy. All of your fingers, all of your toes, your arms and your legs pulling you down into the mat. And now bring your awareness back to your mind's eye and drop a seed of relaxation right down into your torso from your hips to your belly to your chest to your shoulders the whole front and back of your torso take a breath in fill up spaciousness and light as you exhale let everything soften and relax let your pelvis relax let your lower back relax let your belly relax let your mid-back relax. Let your chest relax. Let your upper back relax. Let the front, top, sides, and back of your shoulders relax. Take a breath in. And a full breath out. Relax. And bring your awareness back to the mind's eye again. And not very far this time. Let that seed of relaxation drop into your neck, the back of your neck, the sides and front of your neck. Let your neck relax. Come back again to the mind's eye and drop that seed 
should spread and root through the front of your face, the back of your head, the sides of your head, and the top of your head. Let your entire head relax. Take a full deep breath in through your nose. And as you exhale, sigh and soften, relax everything. Let those seeds of relaxation that you've planted start to sprout and grow roots and come into a beautiful flower throughout your body of bright light and relaxation. Continue with your deep breathing in and out through your nose. Allow yourself to soften completely into this final rest. And I'll leave you here with this poem and allow you to take as long as you like. And I'll see you again next time. This is a poem that was written by Laura Kelly Panucci. When this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hoped to be, and may we stay that way, better for each other because of the worst. Allow those poignant words to seep into your beautiful, deep state of relaxation and enjoy every moment. Namaste.